Hello and welcome to a, a special festival day here as we celebrate the life of Martin Luther. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking. You're like, well, pastor, we already have Reformation Sunday. Uh, we already celebrate Luther. Uh, but uh, Reformation Day isn't so much about uh, Martin Luther as it is uh, all the reformers together working together to build up the Book of Concord, our correct understanding of scripture. Uh, but today is different. Today is about the life of Saint Martin Luther. And so I thought I'd begin with a short introduction before we jump into our matin service. Uh, so Martin Luther was born on November 10th, 1483 in Eisleben, Germany. Uh, he initially began studies leaning toward a degree in law. However, after a close encounter with death during a storm one night, he switched to the study of theology, entered an Augustinian monastery, and was ordained a priest in uh, 1505. And seven years later, he received his doctorate in theology. As a professor at the newly established University of Wittenberg, Luther's scriptural studies led him to question many of the church's teachings and practices, especially the selling of indulgences. And his refusal to back down from his convictions resulted in his excommunication in 1521. Now, following a period of seclusion at the Wartburg Castle, Luther returned to Wittenberg where he spent the rest of his life preaching and teaching, translating the scriptures and writing hymns and numerous theological treatises. He is remembered and honored for his lifelong emphasis on the biblical truth that for Christ's sake, God declares us righteous by grace through faith alone. Now, Martin Luther died on February 18, 1546, while visiting the town of his birth. And so today we are going to celebrate that same faith that Luther shared and explained and taught through his whole life. We begin with the psalmody for Madden's. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Christ became obedient to death, even death on a cross. O oh, come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Christ became obedient to death, even death on a cross. O come, let us worship him. Our psalm is Psalm 8, titled, How Majestic is Your Name. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And I thought, since it's a festival for Martin Luther, we would continue with some thoughts that Luther had written down about Psalm 8. Luther says, Psalm number 8 is a prophecy of Christ, his sufferings, resurrection, and kingly rule over all creatures. This kingdom shall be established by the voice of children, that is, it will be established by word and faith alone, not by sword or armor. This psalm belongs in the first commandment, specifically that God intends to be our God. And the second petition, because this blessing is what we pray for in the second petition of the Lord's Prayer, that his kingdom come. Let us pray the prayer Luther wrote for Psalm 8. Lord Jesus, you were delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Bless and defend your holy church. Endure your word with power, strengthen our faith, and after the sufferings of this life, grant us to celebrate a happy Easter, rising again to live and reign with you in all eternity. Amen. Our office hymn for this uh, special service is number 743. Jesus Priceless Treasure. Jesus, priceless treasure, fount of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. Ah, how long in anguish shall my spirit languish, yearning, Lord, for thee? Thou art mine, O Lamb divine. I will suffer not to hide thee, not I ask beside thee. In thine arms I rest me, foes who would molest me cannot reach me here. 
Though the earth be shaking, every heart be quaking, Jesus comes my fear. Lightning flash and thunders crash, yet, O oh, sin and hell assail me, Jesus will not fail me. Satan, I defy thee, death I now decry thee, fear I bid thee cease. World, thou shalt not harm me, nor thy threats alarm me, while I sing of peace. God's great power guards every hour, earth and all its depths adore him, silent bow before him. Hence, all earthly treasure, Jesus is my pleasure, Jesus is my choice. Hence, all empty glory, not to me thy story, told with tempting voice. Pain, no loss, or shame, or cross, Shall not from my Saviour move me, Since he deigns to love me. Evil world, I leave thee, Thou canst not deceive me, Thine appeal is vain. Sin that once did blind me, Get thee far behind me, come not forth again. Past thy hour of pride and power, sinful life thy bonds I sever. Leave thee now forever. Hence all fear and sadness, for the Lord of gladness, Jesus enters in. Those who love the Father, though the storms may gather, still have peace within. Yea, whate'er I hear must bear, Thou art still my purest pleasure, Jesus' priceless treasure. A reading from Isaiah chapter 62, titled, Zion's Coming Salvation. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes last one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea, on frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, 
in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Before the sermon, I thought it appropriate that we have a brief uh, bit of writing from Martin Luther on Jesus Christ and suffering. Luther writes, There is no other way. If we desire to possess Christ, to live and to rule with him in eternity, then suffering must first be endured. Because this is so, why should we heed the rage and fury of such deadly powers of whom Psalm 2 verse 4 says, God in heaven laughs at them and holds them in derision? If the eternal and omnipotent emperor whose name is God and who lives to all eternity mocks and derides them, why should we fear them or mourn and weep? Truly, God does not mock them in his own defense. He will always be the one dwelling in heaven, no matter how they rage against him. But he mocks them to encourage us, so that we may take heart and bravely laugh at their onslaughts. Therefore, the only thing necessary for us to do is to believe and to pray most confidently in Christ's name that God will give us strength, since he has erected his kingdom and this is his doing. It is he who, without our help, counsel, thought, or effort, has brought his kingdom forth and has advanced and preserved it to this day. I have no doubt that he will consummate it without our advice or, or assistance. Because I know in whom I believe, as St. Paul says, I am certain that he will grant me more, do far more abundantly, and help and counsel us beyond all that we ask or think. He is called the Lord who can and will help in a wonderful, glorious, and mighty way, particularly when the need is the greatest. We are meant to be human beings, not divine. So let us take comfort in his word and, trusting his promise, call upon him confidently for deliverance in time of distress, and he will help. That is all there is to it. We have no alternative. Otherwise, eternal unrest would be our re reward. May God save us from that for the sake of his dear Son, our Savior and eternal priest, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. After Christmas, I had some time off, and it was a great opportunity to catch up with reading books that I've wanted to read for a long time. And I wanted to mention two books in particular. Uh, the first is a book by John Pollock. It's a dramatized account of the life of the Apostle Paul. Pollock describes time and time again the hardships that Paul had to endure because of his message. And his vivid description is based on what Paul himself wrote to the church in Corinth that we just heard in that epistle lesson about beatings and being near death many times. And at five times the Jews have given him the 39 lashes with the whip. 
Three different times he was beaten with rods, etc., etc. Paul had been without so many things. And yet Paul never gave up the preaching of the good news of Jesus wherever he went. Like the prophet Isaiah in our Old Testament reading, he was determined. I will not keep silent. And of course, in the end, after serving and preaching the gospel relentlessly for almost 30 years, he was executed for his faith by the Romans. Now, the other book that I had started reading over Christmas is by a Japanese author, uh, Shusaku Endo. It's called Silence. And it tells the story of two Portuguese missionaries in the 17th century. Now, this is a period of unrivaled persecution of Christians in Japan. And what this book reveals about the church and the missionaries in Japan around 1600 AD is the total opposite of what Pollock tells us about Paul and his contemporaries. The church in Japan is called Kakure Kirishitan, the hidden Christians. Bold missionaries are silenced in their proclamation of the gospel as they are faced with unending torture, the kind that makes even crucifixion almost look like a children's game. But the gospel is good news. It's literally what the word means in English. God's spell is Old English for good news. And that's what the Greek word oiangelion literally means. And that's what it actually is. Very, very good news. So the questions arise. Why on earth would be people be so passionate to kill and torture good and innocent people to make sure that God's news for the world is no longer spread and heard? What makes the gospel so offensive and dangerous to them that it has to be suppressed at any cost? And on the other hand, what makes the gospel so compelling that others will not keep silent about it, even at the risk of suffering the most unbearable torture and losing their lives? Well, perhaps you've heard the term, the gospel in a nutshell. Do you know what people mean when they talk about the gospel in a nutshell? Right. It's the Gospel of John, verse three, or verse, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But there's another nutshell in the Bible, a nutshell that describes the original Gospel message more accurately. That nutshell is right here in this Gospel of Mark, chapter 1 and verse 15. The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. That is the gospel that John the Baptist preached as he prepared the way for Jesus. And that is the message that Jesus echoed after him when he started his own preaching ministry. Like in our Old Testament reading from the prophet Isaiah, everything in the gospel focuses on the salvation that God is about to bring upon his people. That's the good news. But in the teaching of Jesus, salvation is much more than just the kindly smile of a pathetic God showering love and forgiveness on all people with no questions asked. And here it is that we find the reason why some want to silence the voice of the gospel and others just cannot keep quiet about it. You see, there are very many powerful people in this world. You see, there are many very powerful people in this world and in our society who don't want to share their power. They don't want to be held accountable for what they are doing. Look at the world news from many different corners of the world. You see it constantly. When we look at the opening verses of the Bible, we see that the core of man's rebellion against God in the Garden of Eden was that they wanted to be like God. Powerful, rich, autonomous. They did not want to give account for their actions and choices to any other authority. Nothing new under the sun. Today's gospel story tells us that John was put in prison. Why was he imprisoned? Because he criticized King Herod Antipas for his indecent relationship with his brother's wife Herodias. The king put him into prison to silence him and, in the end, beheaded him. He and his wife could no longer bear the voice of one who could not keep silent. Now Jesus said that we cannot serve two masters. The truth is that sooner or later there comes a conflict of interests if we want to serve God wholeheartedly. It makes it impossible to pursue power or wealth for ourselves. 
and at times it can make it extremely hard to serve those who have authority over us. The early Christians could not worship the Roman emperor who proclaimed himself Lord and Son of God. They had only one king, only one Lord, and they knew only one Son of God, Jesus Christ. And that's why the Romans regularly turned against the Christians in the empire. They did not accept competition from Jesus. And just as in the time of the Apostle Paul, still today being a follower of King Jesus in some places can cost you your life. And even here in Canada, in what many people would still consider a Christian nation, following Christ can cost you your job, your career opportunities, the respect of your friends, and more. But we have all the more reason to speak out for Christ and not to keep silent, because his kingship is not just a religious belief, it is a reality. It is a reality right here and now in the lives of you and I who have declared loyalty to King Jesus, and it is about to become a global reality when Jesus will come again to reign over the whole world and judge all humankind. Paul loved Jesus. But thanks to Jesus, he learned to love the people that Jesus came to save, Jews and Gentiles alike. And he wanted to make every effort to extend that saving grace to every person living on the face of the earth. He was ready to suffer and die so that they might receive eternal life. Let's pray to God for such passionate love for him and for others that we cannot keep silent, even if the price for speaking up can be very high indeed. Amen. We continue with the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, when the day shall dawn upon us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet to the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with prayer. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. 
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Lord Jesus, Holy One of God, you showed that the kingdom of God had come by your healing the sick and casting out demons. Heal us in both body and soul by the medicine of immortality of your body and blood, that we may truly be your disciples. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and uh, celebrating with me the festival of a saint who opened many doors for us as Christians, who, who retook the meaning of the gospel back from the corruption it had suffered. And I pray that you will never be silenced, just as Luther refused to be silenced. Amen. Well,